I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Today, I want to show you how to take a photo, any photo, and turn it into a silhouette portrait using Inkscape. This tutorial is coming by request from my wife. This is actually not stock footage today. This is my daughter, and she's turning three. So we want to put this icon on the invite and you can too very easily i like this type of project because it's almost like an entry point to inkscape i'm going to make this instructional video very basic as if this is the first time you've ever used inkscape so you can see what it can do it's all free and let's begin right now i'm using inkscape 1.1 and the welcome screen looks like this on quick setup you'll see canvas i have on default keyboard default appearance classic symbolic and i do get comments about turning to the light theme and maybe someday not today so we're on dark theme that's the only change i made if you go to time to draw you see on the print tab all these different default templates i'm going to choose a4 just as a baseline so we can see the size of the canvas that we're working with if you're already in inkscape you didn't have the welcome screen pop up just go to file document properties you'll get a sidebar menu and all the different choices are here so the very first one a4 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters which is what we're on so we can click out of that now we need to import the photo file import and there she is click on it once open you'll get a dialog box i'll just go with embed for the import type image dpi from file image rendering mode none okay and there she is zoomed in quite a bit so this is why we want to have a template size you can go with the huge photo if you want but for simplicity and easy sizing with some of the tools i'm going to scale it down to make sure it scales down in proportion hold shift and control and if you grab a corner I'll bring it to roughly the size of the template, the page border. You don't need to work in the page border space. So I'm going to go down here into open land and we're at our first decision. I was told that we want the portrait to be facing the other way. So if you look up here, there are some choices. These arrows are all directionals. You can change it vertically right here, left, right. We'll change it so she's looking that way. Little girl you know how on cooking shows they speed it up by having a version of the food already made i did that here to show you the method we're going to use we're going to create a vector overlay right on top of the photo and it's going to look like this my green martian baby i'll show you a special setting on the bezier pen tool so we can quickly and easily make our tracing let's get rid of that and we'll do it now the bezier pen is a little tricky to learn at first i have a dedicated video on it called intro to bezier pen if you want to check that out but here's a quick refresher the bezier pen tool is right here click on it once and you'll see up in the modification area the mode We'll start with create regular Bezier path. It lets you create shapes by making individual points called nodes. And once you have your shape, this tool right here, edit paths by node, click on it once, you'll see each node becomes a diamond and you can move them around to modify the actual shape. Or you could grab in between two nodes and bend it. These handles, once you see them appear, let you create the curve. A key point to remember is the Bezier pen is going to adopt whatever color you have preset. And I'll show you how to do that right now. To make changes, go to Object, Fill and Stroke, and you'll see your sidebar menu pops up. If it's all blank when you open it, make sure you have something selected. So it's blank, what happened here? Select on an object, it will show you what that object settings are. If you've been with me on some of my previous videos, you know that when I make a clipping shape or an overlay, I like to use green just as a preference. I'll move us into the green spectrum somewhere, something nice and bright. And for the stroke, I have to make that green also. I'll click over to the stroke tab and bring it to a darker green, something like that. I'm not going to use this shape as the overlay. Remember, we're setting up the color of the Bezier pen tool. And the last adjustment we need to do is to change the transparency so we can see where we're going. If you look on the very bottom of the fill and stroke menu opacity this slider lets you change the transparency level there she is take it down to something in the 50s 60s and move it out of the way let's zoom in and do it we don't need to worry about these flyaways i'm going to follow the contour of her forehead and nose and lips so back to the Bezier pen tool and you could go on the original mode, but there's a built in setting that helps specifically for examples like this two over from regular 
is something called create bee spline path. Watch what it does. The bee spline mode, as I make my nodes around the outline, automatically does the curve. So you don't have to make a thousand points and fix it at the end. It's doing it with you as you go along. And it's forgiving. If I make my click, and move away by accident. It doesn't actually lock in the next node until you put it in the place where you want it to go. So we go around her nose. If for some reason, like at the bottom of the nose here, you do want to have a hard corner, when you go to make that node, hold shift, click, and now it's a hard corner right there. Let's keep going. Two seconds later, another example, I'll hold shift, I'll get right inside her little lips, come out, and back to normal B-spline. As you go along, you might be wondering, is this looking okay? What am I actually making? If you double click, it's gonna show you that's, that's what we're creating. And you don't have to do it in one go. This little square here and this little square, the starting and ending nodes, if you hover over either, it will automatically add to that shape. Through the magic of editing, we'll do a time jump now to have the whole tracing made, and I'll highlight at the end a couple key points, namely the ponytail, in case you encounter similar design challenges like that on your portrait. Like that, we went over her head, ignored the flyaways here, and for the ponytail, I'm not sure if this hairdo is her finest, so I'll just trace it for this tutorial. But if you wanna make the ponytail or whatever hairstyle you want for your image, you might wanna check a second reference photo. My wife didn't seem to mind when I just traced this one, so we'll go with it. There's our ponytail roughed in. The next question is, how do you make the transition from the face to the torso? And I'll show you an easy one you can do. I'll pick up on the last end point. Using the dotted line reference point here, you can see the dotted line down there. I'll just do a shift click, which gives us a hard point and bring it back to the other one to close the loop. We'll clean that up at the end once it's actually in silhouette mode. And finally, we need to add a very minute detail that does translate visually very well, which is the eyelashes here. I'm gonna switch back to regular Bezier path and just make a triangle over where the eyelashes are. I'm gonna start inside the face, come out to the eyelash line, come down, and finish the triangle. Go to Edit Paths by Node, and you can bend and modify your new triangle to make that eyelash profile view. Time to take all this off of the photo. Click on the face, hold Shift, click on our eyelash. That's gonna hold the selection together so we can move it. Click off of everything so they're now independent again. We do need to change this face portion, which was made with the B spline. Technically, it's not the same as a Bezier path. Go to Path, object to path. There's some nitty gritty details as to why that makes a difference and we've explored it in the past. I'll probably bring it up again in future videos, but for now, let's just move on. One of the first things it lets us do is now combine these two elements. So I'll hit the eyelashes, hold shift, get the face, go to path, union. That puts it together as one shape. We don't need the stroke anymore, so go to stroke, tab, X out of that. Back to fill, opacity, we'll go full and turn it black. There she is. We do have to fix the bottom still. Select the portrait, go to Edit Paths by Node. This will let you bend things or grab a handle to make the changes. <laughs> and that will do it for today. Again, you can go back and make fine-tuned details if there's something you don't like or if you wanna fix the hair or something. But that is it. If you have specific questions on this project or you wanna see something else that we can do together, let me know in the comments and see you next time.